Hey, what's up guys? You're watching DIY Dozier, and on today's episode, I'm going to show you how I built a projector lift for my home theater room. Okay, so I have a home theater room in my basement in my house. It is uh, a small time deal. It's, it's not a professional home theater room. I have a projector. It was going to be hanging from the wall or it was gonna be hanging from the ceiling. Either way, typically that looks a little bit unsightly and I wanted to have the most professional looking uh, setup I could have for a do-it-yourselfer. Uh, most projector lifts cost about $2,000 to about $6,000 depending on where you purchase it at and you know the, the brand and the quality of the lift. Uh, either way, a motorized projector lift is pretty costly and for somebody like me that's just not doable. I just can't justify spending that kind of money on it. So I decided to attempt making my own projector lift for my theater room. After careful planning and a couple days of brainstorming and shopping materials and supplies uh, I decided to go ahead and pull the trigger and buy everything that I needed to get so that I could uh, accomplish this uh, without having to go back and forth to the store and everything it, a lot of careful planning was involved to make sure that I had a thorough understanding of exactly what I was going to be doing with this project let's talk about some of the items that I had to buy to complete this project uh, first up is going to be a 16 inch linear actuator um, which is going to extend and retract in order to raise and lower the projector to the desired level that I wanted to achieve. Um, along with that actuator, I also needed a 12 volt radio frequency control box, which would send a signal to the actuator to turn it on, tell it to extend and retract by a remote. I needed to power that and it runs off 12 volt DC instead of 110 AC current. In order to do that, I decided I was going to use a laptop power supply, which plugs directly into a wall outlet, and it utilizes 110 volts alternating current, and then it changes it to uh, DC current, which is you know 12 volts. I found a power supply that matched the amperage output from the linear actuator. The linear actuator calls for 10 amps of draw. I was able to find a laptop power supply that was 12 volts and 10 amps max of draw. Uh, the linear actuator said it utilizes typically 3 amps, but it can go up to 10 amps depending on the load and how heavy it is or whatever that you're lifting and pulling. So the projector doesn't weigh much. The linear actuator was made to work with, uh, I think it goes up to 225 pounds. I'm lifting something that's 15 pounds. It's definitely not going to hit 10 amps. So anyway, I have a 12 volt 10 amp power supply for a laptop, which I would splice tie into this control box. So I purchased the linear actuator uh, off of eBay. You can get the control box off eBay also. Uh, the 12 volt laptop power supply, uh, you can get that off of eBay. Uh, I went down to Lowe's and I purchased some aluminum L channel to be used for structural support on the side of the lift. I also used some galvanized weldless cable uh, to help to pull it up and down inside the ceiling. Wire rope ferrule. It's a crimping ferrule that you're going to use to make loops out of the galvanized rope. You just crimp it to itself and, and make a little loop. I have one pulley that I purchased and ran up inside the ceiling. There was some half inch birch plywood that I had to purchase uh, so I can make the, the base of the lift for the projector to sit on. I needed some 2x4s. Uh, I only purchased one. I cut it down. It was a 4 foot 2x4. I cut it down to the right size so I can mount my drawer slides in the ceiling and so that I can mount the, uh, the actuator base also in the ceiling. Uh, I utilized some 3 inch wood screws. I used 1 inch wood screws. Uh, I have a long extension cord to power the power supply uh, which I ran from my garage into the drop down ceiling. Uh, Gorilla glue to hold a ceiling tile to the bottom of the half inch birch. 
I used some galvanized hanger strap also to help secure the linear actuator in the ceiling. Uh, there were L brackets that were purchased and used for the base of the lift and the total price for everything was less than $300 total in materials. I determined which ceiling tile I would be removing and placing the lift in by holding the projector up while turned on and facing it toward the wall to see where it fit best. I removed a ceiling tile and looked up into the ceiling at the floor joist and used a measuring tape level builder square to determine where to place my 2x4s for mounting drawer slides. I had previously measured and determined earlier I needed 36 inch drawer slides to retract enough from the ceiling to let the projector project on the screen accordingly. To get the drawer slides to mount in such a way to hold the projector mount, I needed to attach a piece of 2x4 to the floor joist in the four corners of the lift. I then attached one screw initially on each drawer slide to the end into the 2x4 mount to let the slide hang free and level when retracted. Then I attached the second screw in the 2x4 after I determined it was level. I measured the distance of the drawer slides from each other on the four corners and determined the size of the mount to be cut for the projector to sit on. I then cut and attached a piece of half inch birch plywood to use as the base utilizing L brackets on each corner. I placed a one inch wood screw through the L bracket and into the drawer slide as well as the wood base initially. After all four corners had one screw, I then pushed up the mount into the ceiling to be sure there was no binding. The mount moved freely with no binding and I attached the second screw on each slide and also through the base. To stabilize the base and drawer slides I attached L channel aluminum to the two left and two right sides. This way the slides must go up in unison and one cannot go faster than the other causing the lift to tilt forward or backwards. I measured the distance from the slides front to back and cut the L channel to fit. I then found a hole on each slide I wanted to put a machine screw through with a nut on the back. I drilled a hole to accommodate the machine screws and attached the L channel to the slides. I then drilled a hole in the middle of the L channel which I would attach a piece of cable through for the pulley system I was going to make. I determined the center overhead mounting place for a pulley in the ceiling and mounted my pulley using one inch wood screws. I then determined the best placement for my linear actuator to mount in the ceiling, also facing the actuator towards the pulley for the straightest possible extending and retracting. I used a piece of two by four to create a base to mount the actuator to, and also used galvanized hanger strap to fasten it to a floor joist with one inch wood screws through the strap. I placed the control box for the linear actuator just under it on a ceiling tile. I then wired the positive and negative outputs from the control box to the actuator. I took the laptop power supply and cut off the end which would normally plug into the laptop. I separated the positive and negative wires and connected them to the control box. I ran an extension cord into the ceiling from the garage storage space which was plugged into an outlet and connected it to the power supply to turn on the control box. I tested the actuator which worked successfully, extending and retracting 16 inches using the supplied remote with the control box. I attached a piece of cable through the actuator end using a ferrule and crimper. I fed the cable through the pulley in the ceiling and down to the central area of where the cable would attach to the lift. I then attached a piece of cable to the left side of the lift on the L channel I attached earlier. I ran the cable up about 10 inches to the central area above the lift where I could connect it to the cable from the pulley system. I did the same thing from the right side of the lift making a cable attached to the L channel reach the same location in the central area above the lift. I then extended the actuator fully and determined where I needed the projector to sit fully extended. I marked the cable coming from the pulley then cut it formed a loop with a ferrule and crimped it. I attached the two side cables also by using a loop and ferrule method to the pulley cable. I now had a fully attached and functional lift system. I tested it several times and it functioned great. I placed the projector on the lift and leveled it accordingly to show on the screen 
to my satisfaction when fully extended. I programmed the retracted actuator to stop about three quarters of an inch inside the ceiling to accommodate placing a ceiling tile finishing piece on the bottom. I cut the ceiling tile to the size of the exact hole with a razor knife and glued it into place with Gorilla Glue to finish out the bottom of the lift. It's kind of a labor intensive process uh, for a do it yourselfer, but hopefully with this video it can help somebody out and give you the confidence that you need to attempt to do something like this. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If this helped you out, be sure to click that like button and also hit subscribe so you can be notified of future content being released. If you have a question or comment, drop it down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Share the knowledge, share the passion, share the skill, and as always, do it yourself.